Hey, Gail. Hey, Jen, how are you? I'm good, I'm so glad you're having us here today. Thank you so much. My pleasure. So what are you working on right now? This is actually five pieces. They're dancers that are gonna be up high in the air so people can spin and play drums and, and emperor chimes for Hobbs, New Mexico. It's a public, public art. Wow, do how do you get a project like that? I do a lot of public art. It's, a, it's usually, usually, hoping to change this, usually a competition, a national competition with 1% for art for whatever location and you apply and you compete with all the other artists with your portfolio and if they like it, you get to go on the dance floor. Awesome, so I'm looking on the wall and I'm seeing all these paintings. Were you always a sculptor or? No, oddly enough, I wasn't a painter either. <laughs> um, I was a graphic designer by, by training. And, uh, and then, so did, why did you switch? I was doing graphic design, loved it, winning awards, killing it, had a staff, and I took one class in sculpture and it was a language that I knew I needed to speak and, and couldn't get out of my head. And so, what would you say is your favorite sculpture that you've done? Oh, there, whatever is the most recent, maybe. <laughs> no, um, probably the most pivotal piece for me that changed everything um, and felt like my own voice was this one. It's called Bereaved, and it was, uh, it, was, it was important because it happened when I was completely channeling or something. It was about my mom dying and being... Cord. There's no body. There's a whole missing human inside that human. Ugh. And to me, it's a self-portrait. <laughs> I can feel that one for sure. Good. So why are you guys based in Boulder? Um, I went to DU. Oh. And I came out here with my brother because we were ski nuts in our whole huge south, uh, southern Ontario 600 vertical feet of thigh burning hell. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he said, let's go skiing in Colorado. We'll go to DU. So uh, he, he talked me into it. And I, I, how can you leave? Wow. So what advice do you have for other young artists who are wanting to just do fine art? Probably to um, make stuff that's important, make work that's a contribution. Wow. I, that's so great. Um, where do you think bronze, bronze sculpting is headed? Bronze, uh, bronze is tricky. It's a little bit um, traditional. So uh, I don't think of my work as traditional because it's contemporary and angular, but um, but, it, but now we're competing with people who want to be entertained and, and a lot of crazy different arts gone in so many directions. Hmm. It's a big world. Hmm. So we heard that you moved to France for half of the year. I did. What spurred that decision? That was a bucket list item. Yeah. I also think everybody should have a bucket list from as early as they can figure that out. <laughs> but um, I met a family from Australia that took their kids and traveled with them just to put them out of their element, especially in middle school, that's a big black hole. And I decided before I even ever was married or had kids that my kids were gonna in middle school go somewhere that was completely gonna up, upend their ideas. That. That's amazing, that's great advice. So what would you say for you was the biggest difference between American and French culture? You know, um, if you're European, anywhere else really in the world, you are exposed to so much great architecture and art, sculpture, painting. It's so much more valued in their society. So I'm looking around the studio and these pieces are enormous, really. How long <laughs> does it take to do one from start to finish? This one I have to hurry. Because <laughs> you have a deadline. These, these commissions are always deadlined, right? Yeah. Um, and, and the crazy thing about bronze is it's so difficult. That usually takes eight months, 12 months. So I have to get this one done in maybe a month and a half, two months at the most. And um, generally, same. I take longer. Do you know what the end result will be? Or do you find, like, find that you craft it as you go? No, I, no, I know conceptually what I want it to feel like. I don't know what it's going to look like. Sure. Uh, I start and it takes its own life. Do you have a proudest moment in your artistic career? You know, every time somebody really personally connects with something yeah. and tells me about it, why it resonated with them, it's, it's not what it looks like. It's, it's how it affects people. Hmm. What is the most exciting thing in your life right now in terms of art? Um, I, I'm kind of getting an opportunity, uh, intentionally, I guess, <laughs> to, to expand. I, I, got, I got a stronghold in the public art realm by doing sports imagery because I'm totally nuts about sports. But now I've got more of these ideas that are about 
people and how we connect and, and consciousness. And this, this was a crazy drawing about namaste, where the light in us is, what does it look like, how do we connect? And, and that's opened up a whole can of worms with different mediums and how I like to do art, and I'm doing more of that. Cool. And then, so what is this, this piece looking so this, this is, I'm a, pl I'm a finalist for Burning Man funding, um, a crazy place to, that I've never been, <laughs> but uh, looking <laughs> forward to being a part of because the art there is supposed to be really transformative. And, and this piece is about connecting people with themselves and their reflection and resonant sound and laughter and uh, self-appreciation and the light in you and the light in me and connecting. Love it. Awesome. So do you have an opinion then about how people should choose art? I did yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> yeah, art should art should be um, so personal. It shouldn't be about what it looks like at all. It should be about what moves you and and what's important to you. Okay. And so, which artists inspire you? Uh, at the moment, I'm totally geeked out about An Anthony Gormley. I just love his stuff. Cool. And do you have a favorite book, art book? I do. I. I keep referring to Audrey Flack. This is a, I, I don't even know how fond I am of her work, but I love her book. And this has so many really cool, it's conversations between artists and, and what they're thinking and more conceptual than. Ooh, than hold that up so everybody can oh. see. Love everybody that. Everybody needs to look at this book. It's spectacular. And do you have a favorite museum in the world or museums? Oh, so many. Um, the, the, off the top of my head. Give us three. <laughs> OK. The Nasher. If I could be in any museum at the moment, I would love to be in the Nasher mm -hmm. collection. I love that museum. Put it out there. And uh, I, was, I was just recently in the Des Moines Museum, and it's three different architects. Spaces are great. And then I, I love being in the Denver Art Museum. Yeah. I'm so lucky to have a piece there. So right there. cool. There. So out of anyone in the world, a living or dead, who you could have dinner with, what three people would you invite to dinner? Ooh, <laughs> can you make this happen? <laughs> I can try. <laughs> um, I would say that Dalai Lama has to be on there. He's the, come to Boulder before. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I think he'd come to my house. Yeah. The Dalai Lama, I would put with Anthony Gormley and probably Michael Franti. If I could have a circle and talk to those three people, wow. That would be awesome. Perfect. Oh, my gosh. What advice, and I love this question, would you give your 20-year-old self? Take a business class. <laughs> Last question. Okay. What's next for you? Expanding into stuff that is, is more important. Yeah. Change the world. I love you. We <laughs> cannot wait to see. Your work is so incredible. And yeah. thank you so much for inviting us over here today and Anytime. having us in new studio. Open studio oh all the God. time. Love it, love it. And we're at Black Lab Sports. This is Gail Falwell's studio. You guys come see her work. Anytime. Bye, love. I'll talk to Bye. you soon. Thank you. Bye.